Hello everybody, I'm Roxy, this is Kiara Bibliophile, and today I'm going to tell you about what I read for Women in Translation Month. Before we start with the wrap-up, I just want to say that there is a video coming explaining the background with a lot of live updates. I am hoping it will be a bonus video and it will be up this Sunday, so please look out for that. And after that video, I will continue to upload my August wrap-ups. So Women in Translation Month, it is an initiative that I think was born on Twitter or Instagram. I will link the social media down below where, you know, the English-speaking world in particular reads women in translation as the internet book sphere <laughs> has grown more and more people have joined and i think it's so great also there are booktubers that run a readathon and they had a couple challenges i don't know if i accomplished them i think not but yeah go check out their channels i will link them down below so you can go check them out you probably know them already i certainly follow them and enjoy their content but yeah all the information will be down below but before we start with the books just a small disclaimer. I do think that the intention is sort of to broaden the English-speaking reading world's horizons. I still think it is important to highlight the act of translation. I like to highlight translators and therefore, although I think I did read books that were originally published in Spanish by women during August, I am going to talk about them when I do my August wrap-up and not in here. That said, because I don't have the books with me, I don't have the translator's information, but as always, I will list all the books I talk about down below, and I am going to mention not only the English language translator, but the Spanish language translator in the case of the books that I read in Spanish, which I think is the majority. So without further ado, let's start. The first book is Whereabouts by Jumbu Hiri. When I did my possibility pile, link down below, I didn't realize it was that book, which is of course very famous because it's Jhumpa Lahiri. I just didn't make the connection. This is a very short book. It's about a woman who I think is middle-aged or age unspecified, and it's just her going about her day. It was originally written in Italian. Of course, Jun Palahiri has been an Italian to English translator for years now. She edited the Penguin book of, I don't know if modern Italian short stories or Italian short stories, period, but she was the editor of that. And she's just very prominent. She really loves Italian and this is her debut in that language. I enjoyed certain aspects of this. I enjoyed the fragments. It's really not a novel and it's not poetic enough, or at least it didn't read so in Spanish, to be considered prose poetry. I don't know. This is a book that would have never been published, I think at least, if it hadn't been written by Jhumpa Lahiri, because it's just such a non-story, and I love books where nothing happens, but the stories aren't strong enough to be short stories. And I did think of DNFing it a couple of times, but there was always this bit of insight or this moment that made me crave more because maybe I would reach some other moments like that. Some of the stories are interesting. I just don't know. If you are in the mood to just read something that is very light, that will just go through your eyes and then you'll probably forget it, but it will be a nice time, then maybe this is for you. There isn't much of a story or character development or I feel like even not much of a point other than observing through writing. And that can have, you know, a value on its own, but I do not think this is especially well done in a way that it's remarkable or that it has anything that will tell me that I will remember this book in 10 years time, if you see what I mean. The next book that I read, I'm so excited to tell you about, and it's Aqua Viva by Clarice Lispector. Yes, I have finally read Clarice Lispector. It is my first Lispector. It won't be my last. It was so good. In case you don't know, this is about an unnamed narrator, although she does refer to herself as a she. I don't know if that 
comes across in the English language version because adjectives don't have gender, but in Spanish and I think in Portuguese they do. So it's clear she's a woman and she's sort of writing a letter to a former lover, but it's just an excuse to attempt to use language to capture the it, the essence of the moment and it's a reflection on the limits of language and the futility of language and that aspiration of art to to get at it because there is no other way and she tries and it's so meta but in a way that's very honest in a way that it's okay i'm tired okay i'm sad i'm not gonna write anymore okay i came back now i'm writing i'm doing this i'm doing that it sounds like it could be very gimmicky but it's not it's just a real effort on the part of the author and the protagonist to achieve this. And actually Clarice Lispector was very nervous when she published this book because it was so experimental and it was so personal and vulnerable and it was a success so thank god she published it. But yeah, it is a difficult book, it's very short so it doesn't reach that point where it feels like it's too much. It did keep me engaged but it is a book that you are submerged in and it's very intense and you are tired after reading it. I read it all in one sitting which I think was the right way to go but it was still heavy. If you are looking for a story or you know characters that are not to be found this is not for you. But if you want language experimentation and thoughts, something that completely wraps itself around you, then check out this book. I am really looking forward to reading more by Clarice Lispector now. Then I read a book by Amelie Notham that, if I'm not mistaken, is called Tokyo Romance in English. I might be wrong though. Anyways, cover in English here. I read it in Spanish, it's called Ni Deva Ni Dadan. I've spoken about Amelie Notham a couple of times. I actually wrapped up a book by her, I think, in my second July wrap-up, but in one of the July wrap-ups. I will link it down below as well so you can check it out. This is something like my fourth or fifth Amelie Notham, so clearly there's something that makes me return to her often. Of course, they are all very short, so that might help, but also she wrote one of my all-time favorite books, which is The Character of Rain in English. After that, which was my first read by her, however, there hasn't been another book that I've thought is as good as that one or that I've loved as much. This, however, I did like more than I usually like her books. There have been books that I just think they wouldn't have been published if they weren't Emily Notham's yet again. This one is uh, autobiographical. She is the daughter of a Belgian ambassador and so she was born in Japan but they moved to I want to say Belgium but that might not be it but they moved from Japan when she was like five and she took it really hard because she always felt she really connected with the Japanese culture and she returned when she was 21, which is this book, and she is determined to improve her Japanese by teaching French to the locals, and that way she meets Rin Rin, who is a very odd young man, and they start a relationship where Rin Rin gets much more attached than she does, and it's just a fun story. I think it's decently written, it's nothing special, but because I was so stressed in August, I really appreciated this book. It was fun. I think I enjoyed it more than I expected because I really thought the last book I read by Notham was kind of dumb and this one was actually really fun. It's light. I think if you don't read romance but enjoy romantic comedies or enjoy like light slice of life, this might be for you. Now that said, Emily's character, that's what she's called, is very selfish and very stupid and does something that I think a lot of people won't approve of. And of course, because it's her life and it's herself writing about herself, she isn't very critical of it. Now that doesn't bother me because I'm not very sensitive about those things, but I think the ending might spoil everything for you. So I would be aware of that if you really care about people not being assholes. <laughs> Again, a light, fun read. One that was fun and in a way was very light, but 
it also totally wasn't is the book of summer or the summer book in english i think by top jansen <sighs> i love this book children's authors that write also for adults have such a twisted imagination and i don't mean it in a bad way i mean it in a great way so this book is about grandmother and sophia they live in an island and it's almost interconnected short stories it has a very fable like style the vignettes are longer than just one page vignettes and the sense of time is not there so you don't really know how many summers have gone by you aren't really settled anywhere and i think that's part of the charm of the book that's definitely intentional you get lost in this island with grandmother and sophia it's about the relationship sophia is very proper and prim and preachy and the grandmother doesn't give a fuck and it's hilarious but also there are moments when it gets sad or tense and it's just simultaneously very real like you feel the family connection there you feel the love but also the annoyance and the tension there it's all there but at the same time you also get this very i don't want to say eerie it's not it's not eerie but it's dreamlike where you are not sure where you are or what's really happening i don't know if it qualifies as magical realism but there's definitely a touch of that in there not in the traditional way but in that sense of these odd things occur and it's not really noted it's just so good i get it now as i often say with authors that i've tried for the first time now so i'm very much looking forward to reading more by tom jansen i really recommend this if you like quiet books if you like good writing and family dynamics i think all of that is in there i think it's a perfect book just curl up with i'll be thinking about this one for a long time and i think i will revisit it in the future but i would like to read some other books by her first a book that wasn't very successful with me was family lexicon by natalia ginsberg i had to go through so much trouble to get this book by the way i bought it with, with natalie link down below to her channel and i would not have finished this book i don't think if we hadn't been reading it together but i wouldn't have dnf'd it either it's the kind of book that i would have just set aside and completely forgotten about which was very disappointing i had had hopes plus i had to run around to santiago to get it because two weeks before i had to buy it it was everywhere and suddenly it was nowhere and people kept telling me it's out of print and i was like okay it's out of print but two weeks ago i presume it was still out of print but there were copies everywhere and finally i found it at this one bookstore and i was so grateful i bought it right away that made me expect more from it which i know it's not fair but to be fair this is hailed as a great contemporary classic. However, I just thought it was really meh. It's about this protagonist, which is Natalia Ginsburg, basically. It's the story of Natalia Ginsburg's family. And she says that even though she didn't change any names, she hopes this is read as a novel. And so I'm judging it as a novel as per the author's request. The thing is, there is no much craft to it. It's very much like someone telling you about their family and sometimes the linking is clever but at others it just feels disjointed it takes an extra mile to have it both ways to you know have this meandering sort of narrative of a grandma telling you her story while at the same time you know it has a structure although it's very subtle you know it's there in this case i'm not sure it was and i think the reason people like it so much might be what i call the normal people effect which is basically that there is nothing in the text itself other than what you bring to it and because the prose is so easy to bring stuff on to you just bring your own family experience in this case and romantic experience in the case of normal people to just get so much out of it because it's sort of a mirror you might argue that that is what good literature does i personally don't like it but sure i think there is also an issue that this novel might just be really untranslatable in the sense that in italian it sounds sassier or 
more interesting because it is written in informal style but because of the process of translation in spanish at least it reads very much like normal neutral spanish very toned down very understated so there's nothing in the prose at least in translation that jumps out to me and the things that happen some of them are very interesting and i appreciated it on a historical level because it does talk about fascism and there were members of the family that were very politically involved that was interesting but there's nothing about it that makes it a novel or a good novel because i know for a fact that natalia ginsburg didn't come up with any of that it's just maybe if this had been a memoir i would have given it a pass but she insists that we read it as a novel and so as a novel i just don't think it works that well you don't really get to know the characters you only see them through her own eyes and it's very biased and again in a memoir that might be forgiven but in a good novel even if you have an unreliable narrator or even if you have a first person narratives you expect to get perspective through the craft of the author so yeah again natalia ginsburg is a really important author so what do i know maybe it is brilliant but i felt very meh about it i've read the dry heart by her which i really enjoyed and i think it might be that her short fiction is better i can see this story working as interconnected short stories but again there needed to be that division because although the meandering is interesting it needs to have some direction i will be reading more by her but maybe not too soon and i will be reaching for short stories or novellas the final book i want to tell you about is territory of flight by yuko tsushima i said i was going to read it and i read it i am so proud of myself this is about a woman who's a librarian and she gets divorced. At first, she separates from her husband, and it's about her navigating being not a divorcee yet, but becoming a divorced woman and a sort of single mother and struggling to make ends meet. And it's such an interesting look at motherhood. And actually, the first time I heard about it was because of Natalie from Curious Reader, I already mentioned her, her channel is linked down below, and she mentioned it in relation to Yoko Ogawa's The Housekeeper and the Professor, because I mentioned I had never read a novel where there was a single mother. Although, now that I think about it, I did read A Pale View of Hills by Kazuo Ishiguro, and that also features a single mother. Territory of Light. I liked it. I think it's just very strange, because the protagonist is not necessarily likable. I think in The Housekeeper and the Professor, the housekeeper character is so likable and endearing in many ways, not because she's necessarily super nice, but it's in the way she always tries. Whereas in Territory of Light, the character is very depressed and she doesn't make the best decisions. And she sometimes really wishes she could be married. She really wants a partner. She feels like she needs it. And she's barely making ends meet, not only economically, but just her energy and how she's raising her child. It's just heartbreaking. But at the same time, there is difficulty connecting with this woman because she doesn't have such a strongly defined personality. It's not that she's super shy or that she's super aggressive it's it's something muddled and she's so confused as a reader you want her to make up her mind but of course that's very unfair because it's so hard nevertheless i think that's actually a selling point of this book it's not clear cut it's very ambiguous it doesn't offer easy solutions and i think that's always great it's very well written i think if you really need to get very involved with the characters then this is not the book for you because there is a degree not only of detachment but just a clinical feeling to the whole book the author is really dissecting and exploring these situations but it's not super emotional for me that works but i think that doesn't work so well for some people i really appreciated it i think i would reread it actually it has some very beautiful moments the way of course it's called territory of light the way it describes light and how it links it to how the character is feeling i think is really great i don't think it's going to make my top reads of the year but it was still really good i'm so happy i finally got to it and if you've been on the fence i would maybe urge you to pick it up because i think it's not the traditional japanese 
contemporary narrative that we often get. That was Territory of Light by Yuko Tsushima. Those are all the books that I read for Women in Translation Month. I don't think it was a particularly successful month for this challenge, but I did read a lot in August and I enjoyed most of what I read in August with varying degrees of success, but I think I mostly enjoyed everything I read in August, which is always great. There is a DNF though, so look forward to that in my first August wrap up. I think I will still separate the other two so I don't have an hour long video. Please let me know if you read anything for Women in Translation Month and let me know what you are reading at the moment. That's it. See you next time. Oh, everything linked down below. You know that. Bye. I've read The Dry Heart by Heart. I've read The Dry... Uh. The final book I want to tell you about... Is it the final book? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry.